I think it was opportunistic. I think it was in a moment of high rage. Information no one had except the person who must have put that knife inside of her. He had 45 bullets in his body. The intent was clearly to kill those officers and those first responders. The reason we've been so successful with the police is because we target on the prolific offenders. And it's a matter of building a mountain of evidence. He is a man who will never again walk the streets of this city or any community. Hello, I'm Dan Satterberg, and welcome to the Prosecutor's Post. In this program, we take a closer look at the issues impacting criminal justice in our community. We also introduce you to some of the men and women who work for justice every day. Today, we're fortunate to have Mary Ellen Stone, Executive Director of the King County Sexual Assault Resource Center, also known as KSARC. Welcome, Mary Ellen. Thanks, Dan. Tell us a little bit, how prevalent is sexual abuse in our community? Surprisingly so. I mean, we know that about one out of three women and one out of five men experience sexual assault. Now, most of that occurs in childhood. So you figure one out of three girls, one out of, out of five boys experience some sort of sexual assault, which means all of us know people who've been victimized. You know, it's about a quarter of the population overall who've had that experience. Those statistics are just amazing. Who are the abusers? Well, y you know, we, I think we've moved most of the time at somebody that the victim knows. Um, we still tend to think about the stranger out of the bushes, but less so. And King County in particular is a pretty sophisticated area, so I think we've moved to people knowing that it's more likely somebody that they know. And you, so you have betrayal of trust, you have family dynamics. This is a very complicated area to help people. Well, well, it is. And, um, you know, a lot of times because the offender is somebody that the victim knows, there's an assumption that, no, this person could not be really doing this. I mean, I, you know, we hear from parents, well, we hear from adults all the time saying, you know, something doesn't seem right in this situation, or how do I confront this person on their manipulation, grooming behavior, but I don't really want to accuse them of what they're doing. And so it really requires us to be um, vigilant and confident in calling out behavior. Um, and, and holding people accountable. We may not know exactly where that behavior is going, but, it's, it, but a lot of times people feel like, well, I can't say anything about it because nothing bad has happened yet. Particularly when we look at you know, adults who've got access to kids, be they you know, teachers, coaches, uh, babysitters, family members, neighbors, all of those people who, who oftentimes we find end up victimizing a child that they know. And so what we need to do as a community is to be prepared to trust and to support victims when they come forward. Right, and we need to be able to hear information about people that we know and trust, which may be not what we want to think about with them. Um, I think we also need to be prepared to think about the fact that this is all of our problems. We all know someone who's been victimized. Um, sexual assault has come a long ways in terms of moving out of the closet um, 20, 30 years ago to where it is now so that people are much more willing to talk about it. But then sort of helping people take this next step to say, we need to hold people accountable for their behavior. We need to raise questions about it. We need to continue to talk to our kids about this issue. How does KSARC play a role in, in bringing sexual assault to light? Um, we, we do that in a number of ways. Our tagline is in the silence. And, you know, in my honor being with this agency for 30 years, we really have seen an end not a complete end, but a big end to the silence. So we do everything from a 24-hour resource line, which is available for a lot of the questions I mentioned. People will call to say, this situation makes me uncomfortable. I don't know how to handle it. Or how do I have the conversation with my children? Or I'm concerned that something may be happening to my elderly mother who's in a nursing home. How do I take that on? I mean, so we get all those kinds of questions, as well as people who've been sexually assaulted who are calling to say, what do I do next? Where do I go for support? So we're frontline initial support. We provide help through the criminal justice system, working with your staff, as you know so well. Um, provide a, a, a real critical advocacy role in helping people navigate what's a complicated system in the best of circumstances. Um, we provide a tremendous amount of counseling, so all the post-traumatic stress um, responses that victims may have, we use state-of-the-art counseling techniques. We also do a lot of family support, you know, because a lot of times with children, we can work with the child, but more importantly, it's helping that whole family with the dynamics of sexual assault. And what's, what I'm particularly proud of is that we provide all these services for free because of the community support, and we provide them in English and Spanish. So there are so no barriers to people who no need barriers, some help. There are no barriers, right, right. 
And then we have a prevention education component as well. You know, and I think that prevention, obviously, that's maybe some of the most important work that you do. And I'm particularly interested in what you do with teenagers mm -hmm. to help them realize what is okay and what's not okay in a dating relationship. Can you, can yeah, you go through that? Yeah, you know, and I, I mean, where, where we help, help kids, I mean, some of it is what's okay and what's not okay in a dating relationship, but it's also sort of how, how do you um, learn to trust people or not trust people, an area that's of particular interest to us right now is kids who are being victimized online. Online predators, uh, I think every parent's ha nightmare. Every parent's nightmare. What we know is that most kids um, are not going to be victimized, that there's a certain segment of kids not the five-year-old, but more like the, you know, 11, 12, 13, the middle school, younger, high school age kids who maybe are, um, don't have good relationships with adults in real life, so they're online making friends with people online, and that becomes their whole world, and that become, they become very susceptible to being manipulated and groomed online and then eventually in real life in the same way. And what parents need to be able to do is to keep that relationship, I mean, you know, in some ways, this sounds very simplistic, and I don't mean it to be that way, but it's, it's when, when kids have good relationships with trusted adults, that increases their um, resistance or, you know, it increases the protective factors. And so they're less likely to have a lot of bad things happening to them, including sexual assault. It is as important for parents of teenagers to be talking with them about sexual assault, bullying, who are they relating to online, as it is for parents of five-year-olds to be talking with them about it's their body, they can say no, they should tell somebody if something confusing happens. And then, you know, the other, the other end of the spectrum is how do we talk, how do we make sure that, that the elderly, who we know are increasingly vulnerable, and there's a lot coming out about that, we see a lot of those cases, um, how do we make sure that people take those concerns seriously? And so, so I mean, that's, it's the whole spectrum there. You're raising the consciousness of our entire right. county about right. the issue of sexual abuse, and it's not something that people necessarily want to think about or want to acknowledge exists. Right. How do you break through those barriers? You know, I, I think it, I think it's it's small individual steps. It's helping people see that this is in their interest, that this is a manageable piece. And you know, one of the I, I, I've been in this business a long time. I, what keeps me going is the is the hopefulness and the change that we've seen. And you and I are both young enough to remember when we didn't talk about sexual assault. And you see the change in attitudes, and you see victims getting help that they had not been able to get. And I've been able to see firsthand people coming in in really tough spot and leaving feeling like this was a bad thing that happened to me but it's not going to dominate my life and the, I think if we can shift that attitude that really makes all the difference. I imagine that those those victories individual victories where people have decided not to be defined by their abuse is what right. keeps you going. Absolutely absolutely. Here's my question how do you how do you purge this at the end of the day because this is a tough thing to mm. carry around with you how, how do you leave that behind? You know, I mean, the, I, I, it's a combination of having good, positive, um, you know, good circle of support and friends and being able, and being an optimistic person at heart. You know, that's what it comes down to. And I know we're making a difference. You have to be an optimist in these days to try to raise money. How, how, do you, how does K-Stark provide all these services for free? We have um, great support from King County government, all the cities, including the city of Seattle, suburban cities, state, some federal funds, and a huge amount of support from the private sector. We have very generous individual donors. You know, we have our big breakfast. Your big breakfast. Big you have a breakfast. thousand people who show up, and, and you better bring your hanky if you're coming right. to your breakfast. Right. And and it's and, but it's it's also saying you know the, you can individuals can really help both by talking and by reaching out and by supporting our work, and that's how we do it. Mary Ellen Stone, thank you very much yeah. for being here. I want to thank you for watching The Prosecutor's Post, learning a little bit more about the justice system. If you'd like to find out more about the Prosecutor Attorney's Office and other programs such as KSARC, visit our website. I'm Dan Satterberg. Thanks for joining us.